2 Kings chapter number 4. We'll read verses 11 through 14 as our text for the sermon. Uh, we'll be looking at some other scripture as well as we go along. But I want to bring to you a thought that I've titled The Faith Fight of a Determined Mother. The Faith Fight of a Determined Mother. Now let's look at the scripture together. 2 Kings chapter 4 beginning with verse 11. The Bible says, And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said unto Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, Well, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the precious Word of God. And as we look at it for just a few moments, on this very special day that we remember mothers, we pray that we'll be able to see in this mother the type of mother that all mothers should be. And not only, Lord, would this be a message for a mother, but God, help this message to speak to a father as well as it will teach us the type of attitude that we should have as men of God. Now use this for your glory, for Christ's sake. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray, Amen. Amen. I like what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, where Paul is speaking to the young preacher and he said, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life where unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know, as I begin to think about uh, this particular thought, fighting a, a fight, the fight of a determined mother, you know, many responsibilities that that Christians have uh, from day to day, especially in these modern times, uh, can be very stressful. In fact, if you begin to research, uh, uh, medically speaking, or medical research, uh, medical research will show that stress is a major factor uh, and can cause multiple numbers of, of different illnesses of, that we face every day in our body. But I want to challenge you this morning to look with me and see that there's one single vocation, one single position, one single responsibility uh, that is more stressful than any other and that is the responsibility of being a mother. Nobody knows what kind of responsibility that a mother has as she raises her child. Now I want to take you back to just a moment that took place in April of the year 2015. It was during the time that there were so many riots going on in Baltimore, Maryland, and there was one woman that was dubbed by many as the mother of the year for her response for finding her son aiding in all of the rioting that was going on. How many of you remember that? I remember that just like it was yesterday uh, as that news uh, cast goes through or past my mind once again. 
Can you imagine with me, and by the way, uh, this was a viral video. It went viral on, on uh, social media. Everybody noticed what had happened. The video showcased uh, an act of correction that has basically became foreign to our society. This mother reached in there, grabbed her son, uh, slapped him a couple of times uh, and said, you're not going to be a part of this. I've not raised you this way and I'm not going to tolerate you having a part in what's going on here. My friend, would to God again today that we could have parents uh, that would not be ashamed to take appropriate action to protect their children. Now I want you to know that we live in a very sin infested lawless society and we're headed in a downward spiral and if we don't have a God sent devil chasing Holy Ghost revival soon we're going to find ourselves in big big trouble. And so we need that. We need a God sent Revival. We need a God-fearing, a, a parents to, to be raised up again that's not afraid to raise the, the next generation of people in the fear and the admonition of the Lord regardless of how unpopular it may Amen. have become. We need a God-fearing mother and daddy to raise these children in that way. You need to understand that we're fighting a real devil. Did you hear me? Amen. We're fighting a real devil. Let me tell you something. Satan is a deceitful demon that waits to patiently tear you up when you let your guard down. And you need to stay in tune and in touch with God. We need to claim the victory by the words of our testimony and by the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. In the fourth chapter of this book that we've read in 2 Kings, there is a Shunammite a woman mentioned here, we don't even know her name, that could basically be the mother of the year. Now, she is a woman filled with faith, and I'm not going to, I just read a few verses to you. Go back and read the entire fourth chapter of this particular book, and you will get, uh, the fourth chapter of Second Kings. Read the whole chapter there and you'll get a good idea of what I'm talking about when I say that this woman should be a mother of the year. She is a faith-filled woman who made up her mind that she would fight to hell and back before she would allow Satan to take her child away from her. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will be godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen, did you hear that? All that live godly in Christ Jesus will. It don't say you might will. It says you will suffer persecution. Now I want you to know something. You and I don't have all we need. Listen, we don't have all we need to fight against Satan on our own. Now a lot of us try to fight the devil on our own, but we don't have everything that we need to fight the devil on our own. Listen, we need some help. But with the aid of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the appropriate blessings of God that has been provided for us, we can make it through any situation that comes into focus, that comes into our focus, or that is presented to us in our lives. But try to handle it on your own. <laughs> you try to handle it on your own, and it won't ever work. You see, when the devil himself sees you reaching out to God for help, his first inclination is going to be to try to stop you from harnessing and utilizing the power of God. Amen. The devil don't 
have any power over you. If you're a child of God, you have power over the devil. But you see, the biggest problem is we don't utilize and we don't harness the power of God like we should. We try to take care of things on our own. Listen, you wasn't even on Satan's radar until God started blessing you. <laughs> Did you hear me? You wasn't even on Satan's radar until God started blessing your life. It's then that you got to be on Satan's radar. It's then that he began to try to do everything that he could do to cause you to lose sight, to, to lose focus of the power that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> it amazes me to go into some of the places that I have to go into from time to time. Whenever you walk into a home where a devout child of God is suffering with a terminal disease that will actually steal their life away barring a miracle from God. And you walk into that home and you hear something like this. Hey, preacher, you know I'm all right. <laughs> Said the devil may steal this body, but he can't touch my soul because I'm going to live forever. And that's a wonderful thing and a wonderful thing to know that, that if you're a child of God, victory is already yours. In 2 Kings here, this Shunammite, this Shunammite woman, boy, that's a tongue twister. This Shunammite woman is described as a great woman. Now, she's content. She is content, though nothing is perfect at all in her life. If you go back and you read this entire chapter, you'll find that this, this woman, you'll find that she has a heart for the man of God. In fact, when the man of God would find his way to where she was, the city in which she lived in, my friend, when he would find his way there, she always said to her husband, the man of God has arrived. We got to feed him. We got to take care of him. And in fact, if you read the entire fourth chapter, you'll find that this particular woman looked at her husband one day and said, the man of God comes quite often. Why don't we just go ahead and fix him a place to just stay with us when he comes into town? And so they set up a bed and prepared him a place to lay his head. Now if you get into the text that I read to you, you'll find that uh, Elisha says to Gehazi, he says, uh, you know, that woman's been pretty good to us. Why don't you go and see what she needs? So she invites the man of God over for dinner as he comes into town. She prepares him a meal. She makes him a place. And then the man of God recognizes, hey, she's been pretty good to us. So we need to do something for her. Let me tell you something. When you begin to care about others, listen, you need to get this. You see, we're so wrapped up in caring about ourselves many times that we don't ever have others on our mind. Hey, don't look at me spiritual. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in ourselves that others is the Father's thing from our mind. But let me tell you something. When you begin to care about others and you begin to reach into the lives of others, it's then that you get God's attention. 
Listen to what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. He says, Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. You want God to be good to you? Be good to others. Amen? Amen. You want God to be good to you? Be good to others. Listen, Elisha said to his servant, he says, yeah, that woman's been pretty good to us. She really has. Why don't you go and see if she needs anything? Go see what she needs. Go see what the Shunammite woman needs. Go, go see. I wish he'd given us her name for her, but it didn't. Go see what this woman needs. And this is what the woman said. Hey, I don't really have need of anything. I live among my people. And you know, I, I'm just happy to do this for a man of God. Not anything I really need. I'm just glad to do this for a man of God. But Gehazi noticed and said, the woman doesn't have any children and her husband is old. You know, it thrills me whenever I begin to read things like that. You see, God can take stuff that we think is old and do something with it. You know, I, 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 I like old cars. Anybody in here like old cars? I was a muscle car man. I, I enjoy, listen, I had a 1968 Super Sport Impala Chevrolet. Boy, I wish I had it back. <laughs> Ain't no telling what that car would be worth now. I like old cars. I do. I, I enjoy looking at them. I'm not going to spend no money on, on, on old cars because they'll break you. <laughs> But now let me tell you something. Somebody told me one time, says, hey preacher, you know, if you got a car over 30 years old, you can get an antique car tag to go on that car. Man, I hit 61 this year. I'm an antique. Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm an antique. But let me tell you something. God can take antiques and do something with them. Now, I don't know how it happened. Now, I don't really get into telling us how it happened, but this, this lady had a son. <laughs> God blessed, and this lady had a son. You see, when unfulfillment gets revealed, it begins to wake up faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to keep moving forward. How about you? I want to keep moving forward. Listen, look at the person sitting next to you and tell them this, I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far to turn back now. All right, Ed, behave. <laughs> I've come too far. To turn back. Now look at look at Second Kings chapter four, verse fifteen, sixteen. And the man of God said, Call her. And when he called her, she stood in the door, and he said, About this season, according to the time of thy life, thou shalt embrace a son. Hey, the man of God says, Honey, you're gonna have a baby. You're going to have a baby. You're going to have a son. Now notice what she said. Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie. Do not lie unto thy handmaid. Now you want me to tell you what that... You really want me to tell you what she said to the man of God? No. She didn't say, are you crazy? This is what she's really... I'm going to interpret. I'm going to interpret that last part. God... Do not, he said, Nay, Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. This is what that means. 
Man of God, don't you be playing with me. <laughs> this is a serious thing. Basically, what she was saying is, what you're saying is humanly impossible. When things are humanly impossible, I want you to know with God, all things are possible. Now, God shows up. He gives her a blessing and she bears a son. Listen, you can't go backwards when you're moving forward. Unless you're driving a car. And then you hope you got a backup camera. I remember when they didn't have backup cameras. Had to turn that head. That's right. Now look at verse 17 and verse 20. It says, And the woman conceived, she bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life, and when he, he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, listen, and then died. Now God's blessed the lady with a baby, and the baby's sitting on mama's lap till noon, and then all of a sudden, something happens. The Bible says the baby died. Listen, sometimes... The calamity that happens in life, uh, uh, my friend, it did not come to discourage, but rather to wake up the fighter that God's put inside of you. Hear me. Let me tell you something. Some of that stuff you may be going through right now, God has allowed you to go through it to wake up uh, uh, the fighter that's in you. Amen. Sometimes God wants to wake up uh, the fighter that's in you. <laughs> it's an easy thing to sit back and to throw in the towel and say that I'm just going to give up. Listen, you're not going to be a candidate to be the mother of the year if you just go along with the status quo program that's going on. There is a kingdom warrior inside of you. Awaken that warrior that's inside of you and put hell on notice. Amen. Devil, you're not going to steal my blessing. Honey, let's get South Georgia. Devil, you ain't going to get my blessing. You ain't going to do it. It's my blessing. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 12, the Bible says, And from the days of John the Baptist into the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and violence take it by force. force. There are four traits in this mother's fighting nature that I want you to notice. Number one, this woman harnessed her emotions. Let me tell you something, ladies. Y'all can get emotional. Amen. The only time a Baptist deacon would say amen and it's at the wrong place and all the ladies said... Amen. <laughs> Hey, ladies, you all can get emotional. Listen to me. Don't let the devil make you sweat. Don't let the devil make you sweat. If you're a child of God, God is on your side. Amen. The second thing I want you to see is this woman stayed faithful in God's promises. Don't expect anything short of God's promises to happen. Although the woman was in an emotional battle, she said... When you go back and you read it for yourself, she said this, All will be well. All will be 
well. The third thing that I want you to see is that she had a sense of urgency. She had a sense of urgency to get to someone that could agree with her and have a word from God to overturn the problem. Now, if you read the story, you'll find that this woman says, Saddle up the donkey! Now, if you want to get real King James, he, she actually said, Saddle up the ass. Amen. Saddle up the donkey. We got to go find the man of God. <laughs> We've got to go find the man of God. So she told him to saddle up the donkey to drive and to go forward and listen and slack not thy riding except I tell you to. She says, we're going to get the man of God. Devil didn't like that. <laughs> Devil didn't like that. The thing that made this mother a candidate to be the mother of the year is the fourth thing that I want you to see. She had a determination to win the battle. Let me tell you something, child of God. You need to have that same determination that this mother had, whether you be a daddy, a mama, a man, a woman, a boy, or a girl, if you're saved by the grace of God, you need to have this same determination that this woman had. The Bible said that Jacob wrestled with an angel all night to the breaking of the day. And he said, angel, I'll not let you go. I'll not let you go except thou bless me. Oh, don't turn loose of God. Oh, when things look bad. Oh, hold on to God. Hold on and say, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Elisha told Elijah, as the Lord liveth uh, and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he received a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And friends, listen to me. If you will research the scripture in the Bible, you'll find that Elisha himself performed exactly twice the number of miracles that Elijah did. In fact... The last miracle that he performed, he was already dead. His bones were already in the cave. And there was a battle that was taking place. And one of the soldiers had gotten killed and they were running away from the heat of the battle. And they had this man's body with them. And listen, can I be South Georgia again? They chunked his body in this cave that they found. And when they chunked his body in the cave, his body landed on top of Elisha's bones and the very dead bones of Elisha shook life back into that man and he got up, ran out of the cave and outrun the two men that threw him in there. Woo! Glory to God! That's God right there! Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! That's the kind of power that's a God we serve as God. Lord have mercy. This woman qualifies to be the mother of the year because she was determined that if God had given her this child that she wasn't going to let the devil steal this child away. God had given her the child and God could resurrect the child. Listen, it's time for the church to send a message. If we have to drag them off of the corner, we're not going to lose any more children to an unjust society. We need mothers that will be mothers of the year to say, I've got to fight. I've got to fight. I've got to fight to bring my son and daughter back. I've got to fight to keep my grandson and granddaughter out of the pits of hell. I've got to fight for the glory of God. And I am more 
than a conqueror through him who loved me. How do you close a sermon like this? Listen. A great preacher by the name of Dr. G. Campbell Morgan. Anybody ever heard of him? Old time preacher. He had four sons. And all four of his sons made preachers of the gospel just like their daddy. And one day, Dr. G. Campbell had company. One of his boys' name was Howard. And they were all sitting around. Howard was, I think, probably the baby boy. I'm not sure, but possibly the baby boy. And somebody looked over at Howard, one of the visitors, and said, Howard, who's the greatest preacher in this family? Remember now, there were five preachers in the family, four sons and a daddy. And this fellow who asked the question just knew that he was going to say, Daddy is the best preacher in the crowd. But he shocked them all as he looked at his daddy in his face. He said, Mother is the best preacher in the family. Mother! He's the best preacher in the family. I challenge you this morning, ladies, to be a spiritual mother. Now, some of you, in fact, most of you probably already raised your children, but you got grand youngins, amen? Be a spiritual mother or grandmother. I challenge you to do so. And when you do that, you're going to be a mother that adores your child. You'll do everything in your power to point that child to Christ. You're going to be a mother that will begin to build character in that child. You're going to be that child's caretaker. And when, when the hounds of hell begins to march, you're going to kick the hounds of hell out of the way so that that child can be victorious. You're going to be that mother that dedicates her life to raising her child in the love and admonition of the Lord. You're going to be that mother that encourages your children. Hey, if you've got grown children, mama continue to encourage them. They need it. In fact, my youngest looked at me not long ago and he said, Oh, Daddy. He said, I'm a grown man now. I said, you still my baby. <laughs> Hey, encourage them. Firmly correct your children when you need to. Listen, give all of yourself to them. Be their healer and inspire them. And just keep on giving. You can't give too much. And, and we could just go on and on and on and on. The list could just go on. Thank God for a mama who will fight the hounds of hell to see that her child is where that child needs to be. Now let me tell you something. There's a lot of things that can grab our children today. Did you hear me? My youngest son was in a drug rehab center for two years. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life was to send him away for two years. When he walked out of our home, he looked at me and he said, you're the reason I've got to go off and I'd kill you if I could. My own son said that to me. And my heart shattered. But two years later, <laughs> I stood and I preached a sermon. And my boy didn't walk down the center aisle. He ran down the center aisle. And he grabbed me and he hugged me in front of the whole church. And he kissed his daddy. And he said, Daddy, I'd be dead today if it weren't for you. We need some more. And I'm not, hey, I'm not pinning any stars in this daddy's crown. But that's the kind of mamas and daddies we need that'll fight the hounds of hell and snatch your children out of the devil's hands and say, devil, 
this is God's child because I gave him to God when he was born. When she was born, this is God's child. Raise up the fighter in you. And along with Jesus, you will win the battle. Stand with me. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Now use it for your glory, for Christ's sake. Amen.